Hey everybody, Texas Stroker here, Lance's Performance Shop, LoneStarMopars.com. 80 degrees, haven't seen that in a while, and it's humid. Very strange, we're not getting rain. It's kind of been a, a very, very wet year for us, but uh, what's also wet is this video. It's dripping with wonderfulness. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to keep this one pretty simple. There was a part of a fairly large haul, uh, Memorial Day discounts, if you will. Uh, this is going to kick it off. Why? Because it's probably what you would be the most excited about seeing, I would think, across the board. So I try to cater to what I think people would want. And instead of just piling it down and kind of saturating it with everything, going to keep it clean, going to keep it simple. We're going to have two items and they are very closely related so we won't be needing these i use these to cut down something else we've already opened up uh what we will be needing is sitting over here to my side a little mts friction peg holder that's right if you recall from all of our past videos mts green what's that it's metric and it's coken it's a particular case as you might have guessed from the easy to read size labels it's quarter drive, six point in this case, deep and shallow. What would pair so well with that? Well, it would be a quarter drive ratchet, right? And if you recall, Koken, of course, they have quarter drive ratchets. They've had them for a long time. The problem is, I came along, and as usual, 3 8 is kind of my bread and butter to test things with. And I liked it. Liked it so much, in fact, we wound up with a couple of the ratchets. But here's the catch. You think, well, hey, if you like them, you should have bought quarter and half inch right well if you remember uh, back I mentioned it several times the reason we didn't pull the trigger on either a quarter or a half inch drive coking is because the new 72 tooth iterations from their zeal line were coming uh, they did it's kind of confusing I guess if you're just like jumping into it but uh, there's technically zeal ratchets that didn't have 72 teeth but now they've sort of been superseded by those that do have 72 teeth if that makes any sense and we'll just jump right to the action here and we've got two items the first one being part number 2726z it's in this tiny 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 little box <laughs> and, uh, it's gonna set you back 101.75 now coming in right here we have got part number 2726z b dash 160 this is going to be a little bit longer of a box right so here's the issue 101 dollars and this is from drpd with you know huge discounts right so 10175 pretty much the best price you're probably going to see and 12320 uh, those prices might actually be before the discount so uh, take that for what it's worth but here's the deal uh Koken, you know like when i first started buying it it was kind of like in a sweet spot you know most of it still is but with these this latest iteration of zeal ratchets they've kind of entered a little steeper of a price accompaniment right um at that threshold you're getting very close uh to tool truck territory right expensive tool truck territory uh, i'm not sure how i feel about that <laughs> it's uh i don't think they would be doing themselves any favors it's not that i don't think the ratchets could command that uh, it's just simply a deal where where they fell was a nice little niche. You have kind of like your El Cheapo borderline junk down here. Some of it's good, some of it's total junk. And you've got your sort of like mid-tier, <laughs> like low-end mid and kind of high-end of the mid-tier, right? And then you get into your like either really good or really expensive stuff. And Koken was kind of in this like sweet spot where they're priced just a little bit past like your mid-tier items and considerably less than your top end price wise or you know perceived quality wise and the quality is over here but the price is over here it was a great setup for us the consumer right the end user um i say that now if this was three eighths you know, i wouldn't be as picky if this was half inch i think well that's a pretty solid pickup um this is kind of, I mean, some of these ratchets, I'm just going to tell you right now, like if you don't wait, if you don't wait for a sale, shop around, try to get the lowest price or a deal combined type of a situation, you could very easily be 
spending the same money that would get you a snap-on ratchet. Not to say a snap-on's better, not to say it's worse, but you're in that price tier, and that's the scary thing, right? Uh, I'm not going to sit here and argue the quality of snap-on, but I will... I Even the biggest, biggest of fanboys have to admit their prices are an outlier, right? <laughs> They're way up there. And... Uh, Koken, it's not that I don't think they can be there quality-wise, it's that I think that might hurt them in the long run. Because uh, where they were, they were just at a really, really good spot, in my opinion. You've got quality that's going to be on par, you know, in some cases equal to or above, depending on what you're doing and, um, you know, what you're utilizing. But the price one is so much lower. It's one of those things, you know, it's like the perfect storm. And I don't know if uh, manufacturing costs have gone up. I don't know if they're like, hey... You know, I wonder what we can get for this type of a thing. Um, but yeah, again, if this was half-inch stuff, I you know, 101, 120, yeah, that's that's pretty solid. Um, you know, significant, not significant, but I mean, you know, probably 60, 80, maybe even half the price, depending on how you option it out, you know, lengthwise and everything. But with this quarter drive, I'm a little bit more of a stickler. I don't expect to spend as much. People are always telling me in the comment section, like, oh, you got to get this quarter. You do quarter this, quarter that. Just half inch at work. Well, you know, that's pretty much bread and butter than three eighths here. Um, quarter, yes, like I've said millions of times. What do I use it for? Well, A, you know, when it needs to be the smallest form factor possible for obvious reasons. B, when it's like fasteners going into plastic, particularly old, dry, brittle plastic. Uh, interior work, sometimes it's nice. Um, obviously, there's times, you know, like not only is maybe the form factor, you could fit a 3H drive socket in there, but you might not be able to turn the ratchet quite literally because the handle or the body is there. So the quarter drive, again, sizing down, you know, you get a little bit more articulation, speed things up. Uh, those are the selling points for me. It's not something like this wouldn't be my daily. It wouldn't be frequent. It's my go-to is going to remain 3H, right? If I ever like change fields or get into some other stuff, maybe quarter becomes vastly more important to me. But for me, it's sort of like a third fiddle, <laughs> if you will. Uh, it's also the smallest, and therefore, you know, the consumer, you look and it's like, oh, these are smaller sizes. They're, you know, not as big. They, they should cost less. And for the most part, with the sockets, you still see that the ratchets, though, is where things literally are ratcheting up. And um, I kind of contemplated what to do. I really wanted to bring in a quarter and a half inch. Uh, the issue is there's currently not a half inch flex head. And word on the street, uh, can't say the source, but, you know, a little birdie told me that uh, there is a serious effort to get a half inch flex head on the market so uh, that would be very desirable as would kind of just a fixed version be right but this is one of those things where i almost kind of regret this I haven't used it haven't done anything like i've been spinning it for a week here behind the scenes you'll see it you know as i see it but it's uh for one very simple reason the size <laughs> Okay, uh, I'm going to come just first thing I find, okay, a little precision via, look at that, it's it's longer, the, the driver's longer than the box, the handle is almost like 80% of the box, right? Um, I get it, you know, it's the form factor and everything, and you're like, hey, you, you, you've got a longer one there, obviously we do, but let me just drop this down, and... <laughs> Yeah, right here is $101.75. Now, this is classic Koken. I feel like I have to zoom in, make this thing look bigger for you. Like, you know, my hands are fairly large, probably not the biggest mitts in the world, certainly not the smallest, but this thing is dainty. You know, like, I'll use that word. My, my one big complaint with Koken has always been, like, the size of the handle, you know, in terms of, like, length forward. In this case, you, know, you can't really go any farther. I mean, like... There's my index finger. <laughs> okay, this puts things in perspective for you. There's no camera trickery. I don't have time in my life for that. But, uh, you know, I'd prefer a little fatter of a handle and certainly longer. And with this, you don't have it now. If you're sitting here and you're like, moron, you have this. Why would you brought that in? Well, here's the deal. This would be definitively what I want to use. However, as I sit here and I ponder life... <laughs> Uh, waiting to place an order it's like you know that might come in handy sometime you know 
And what if you don't have room to swing? You know, the longer iteration of the quarter drive, you're gonna wish you had the smaller one, and it kind of makes sense. So, in it came. And uh, in terms of the ratchet itself, phenomenal. Everything I know and love from the 72 tooth, you know, 3 8 iterations is here and accounted for. Just the instantaneous. This is the biggest thing with Koken ratchets for me. That's uh, not their sweet price point or anything like that. Like, I would pay money for this. When I come up and we've, like, you know, we reach the end of the travel, let's say that there's just a firewall right here, okay, or some protrusion in the firewall kicking out wiper mode or something. You come, you're tightening, you hit right here, and then all I have to do is go back that far and I can reverse course, right? Continue tightening or loosening. That becomes a really big deal when the obstruction is here too. <laughs> the ratchet is kind of going into this crevice. With some ratchets, I mean, you're not even going to be able to do it. You're literally going to come in with the open end of a wrench and you're going to have to sit there and fumble through it and just hope that it gets to a point where you can spin it by hand because it's a little quicker if you can get your fingers in. But with this, the instantaneous ability to just continue the motion is phenomenal and that's in my opinion why you can justify the price of this little guy at 100 dollars right um like i said i don't i'm not going to complain that this is too expensive because i don't think it is i just think they've sort of moved from their sweet spot in the price to quality spectrum when quality is way over here and price is way down here that's a go <laughs> <laughs> like jump on it now before they realize their mistake type of thing and maybe they did uh it could like i said there's tons of stuff behind the scenes i don't know maybe this is the manufacturing they they sell three eights maybe that's their bread and butter i mean after all they did introduce it first so maybe this is like lower production runs type of a thing uh there's all sorts of reasons you know that this could come in at a price point that it is but it's certainly no fault of the performance and that's why this little guy is here so again this little one right here if you want to replicate it 27 26z 72t it's very important i know a lot of you buy from the jungle side or other nefarious sellers and aren't like you know authorized resellers of koken if you do that yes there is going to be a 27 26z there is a zeal ratchet okay um actually in quarter i guess there still would be my catalogs in the house my apologies but you're always going to want to look for the 72t at least here early on make sure whether there's a product description or a part number or something protect yourself look for 72 tooth not to say the 36s are bad because they're actually really good the same characteristics apply it's just obviously this is doubling your tooth count a little finer of an action but you'll want to look for that 72 tooth designation setting that down and like i said it's this will never be my first choice in quarter drive ever no not the first choice now will it be a choice that i'm super grateful to have in certain situations absolutely and that's where it's going to shine this guy right here this is going to be sort of like the main draw for me personally um what we've done here again just kind of recap this one for you 27 26 z and you think hey what's that b there for with koken with these new iterations they did something <laughs> they added a quick release uh, and that's going to be indicated by b also in this case the 160 that is going to be the length you see this didn't have a length that's because that's your standard length of a zeal ratchet and quarter drive this guy right here though 160 that's going to be the longer extended reach version and then again what did i tell you protect yourself look for the 72t at the end of the part number man sweat dripping into the eye and burning there but let's get this guy freed from his box let's be the last time he's ever in there and he's going to live a very very glorious life so this is a big deal for me not only because a this is way more akin to what i would prefer but b i've never had a koken zeal let alone any koken with a quick release so very cool we're going to check this out here shortly obviously we opted for a flex on both quarter drive could we have done some things and i will say their non-flex versions yeah i think they were reasonable you know as i almost went that route like this one and this one but i wanted to like have different lengths and i thought you know this guy right here with the flex head could be a lifesaver 
pulled the trigger and then this is really like if i only had to settle for one quarter drive coke and ratchet this would be it it's the long one it's the flex head and it's a quick release quarter drive i'm not concerned about weakening the anvil <laughs> Okay, uh, even with like a 14 or in the case of some holders a 5 8 socket which is so crazy hard to find and I will realistically probably never use but uh, I do think 9 16 is 14 you know, that's feasible for certain things but I'm not too worried about weakening that I'm not worried about it being a flex head if we want like some long you know 18 20 inch whatever idiotic thing we want to do we can worry about that later this is gonna be like the money maker quarter drive coking for me all right now here's the issue that I have and this is like exasperated with this particular style now makes sense they're uniform they're even this the, I don't expect them to go any farther up with the handle at all they cannot <laughs> there's a physical limitation called the end of the handle right and this one I get it you know that would add a little bit more bulk to it albeit very minimal that's one positive of having something like that but I want to again bring in my left hand index finger <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I mean, if I, if I put that at the base of the hand, right, we're up here at the selector switch, and then here we don't obviously do that, it's a much longer shaft, but this is an identical length handle, and uh, that kind of sucks, I'm not going to lie, because look where my thumb goes, way up here, right? I'm not asking again for it to extend all the way or anything crazy, but for the ultimate, you know, I have to come in, I'm not going to cheese this stuff. Koken doesn't pay me, DRPD doesn't pay me, you know, I'm not like getting cash from the back door from, you know, Harbor Freight, you know, to bash these things or something. This is just a situation like I legitimately wish the handle. Go back and watch all my videos. Uh, many of you probably have. <laughs> and I thank you for that. But you'll note a common complaint, I'm very consistent in my preferences, is a longer handle. Now there's many things like the Capri 38's breaker bar. I hate the handle, it needs to be way longer, but Dad gum, that thing has come in super handy. <laughs> and uh, this right here, it's the same deal. For me personally, I would love to have this extend up. And we might even do that at some point in time. But I think between these two, we're covered, right? Uh, the main reason I didn't get a push button here, I thought, well, you know, if I'm in that tight of a quarter, I don't want anything to inadvertently. Now, it's not the most flush thing, it's very good. Uh, I've just gotten, I've been using that Nepros a lot, the new one, and that thing is like almost recessed. It's crazy. Uh, but, you know, comparatively, this is really good. It's probably at least half, maybe 60% the profile of like a typical quick release button. Uh, and for some that are a little bit lower, they have a raised head on the outside, sort of like a dome effect, or dish, I should say, inverted dome, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so I do think that's pretty good on that front. Now, what we want to do. We're gonna come in and we're gonna go with the tin. We're gonna go deep and we're gonna start with the little guy here. So let's say that it's a weird situation. I'm going, we're a picture if you will, <laughs> you know what you're looking at, a 68 to 70 B body dash, okay? And we're coming in and we're going through the radio cutout and up here, well, there's heater controls, okay? And it's obviously not a 10 millimeter, but just bear with me. This is a situation where I could conceivably have this guy up there and man, that ratchet action is super nice. <laughs> but it's a deal where we're coming in, we're installing the thing, we gotta get this, you know, up the fastener. There we go. Um, like I said, limited areas where you've got tight confinements, where this guy might not fit, even with the flex and weird angles we might be able to get, this one can. That's going to be a huge deal for us. Will I use this one often? No, that's what this is here for. But in certain situations, I will have things covered, and I am happy about that. Now, coming in right here to the quick release is literally, you're seeing it for the first time, yours truly, using a Koken quick release. Tad gum, just listen to that. Man, so good. <laughs> Like I say, you know, like all the shortcomings, there's a reason this is still here, and it's because of that, uh, the ratchet action. So, uh, could I build a more perfect ratchet for myself? Absolutely. But would I use this spec? Yeah, the, the important part of it. So, can I get by with this, especially quarter drive? I'm not going to very rarely, you know, be doing anything stupid where there are tons of torque required to either break something free or tighten it. And truth be told, in those situations, when you actually just get something tight, you're kind of content. So, 
this I'm pretty excited about now. Another good thing here I just thought of. 10 millimeter, quarter drive deep, nothing special, not extended reach, not, you know, zeal or shallow or semi-deep. The deep socket, like if you, obviously you can't replicate my hand, but if you've got quarter drive coking deep sockets, 10 millimeters what I have here, it is literally a little bit longer than the handle. Factor that in for yourself before you make a purchase. It's going to be the same thing here, obviously. Again, same exact length of the handle. But, uh, yeah, this is what we did. And uh, I want to know, I'm sure these are really, really new. I'm not sure that Koken has even sent out the pre-orders. But uh, the RPD, you know, they like sold out. The stuff I wanted, you know, there are some available, but it was like the you know three eighths and a quarter drive body or some new three eight stuff with the quick release stuff and i was like yeah no i'm holding out <laughs> and uh i did not anticipate that they would get a restock that fast but they did and we cashed in and uh, like i said when you consider that it is a flex head for in retrospect the 101 it's not terrible but like i said you're i think pick your iteration of snap on and you might be like 40 away um which again, you know, get it off the truck, cash sale. <laughs> you, you could probably pull some strings if you kind of get what I'm saying, right? Um, I feel like this is a way better buy, uh, being the extra length and the fact that it's only like 20 bucks more. But uh, I wanted to have both iterations. I felt like I wanted, I knew I wanted to try the quick release. I was kind of torn. I had the half inch in my cart. And then I thought, you know what, I'm just going to wait. I'm going to see, you know, I don't know when the like flex head might come. It could be a year for all I know. Uh, but maybe here coming up, I'll snag it, you know, if they're in stock and on sale. But uh, I also kind of, my logic was, hey, I'm pretty good on, you know, what I have with fixed heads. Quick release would be cool. But I wanted to try this out before we sort of committed, so this was also kind of like a preliminary research for the half-inch drive zeal, which we will bring in. I'm excited about that because I won't have to complain. I'm sure I will mention it. <laughs> Probably the thinness and perhaps that it doesn't go up as far, but being a longer ratchet, eh, we're going to have more real estate for a handle. Should be proportional by Koken standards. But uh, And this is, to be totally honest, that's something I'm going to gripe about on everything. And speaking of that... I thought, since we're going dedicated, what better way than to make this happen? So this little guy right here, uh, which I guess I've used a little bit, the half inch, oddly enough, has been the one of these that I've used the most. If you don't like Tecton or you don't want Tecton, go Pittsburgh, green handle, same thing. But I want to kind of highlight this, okay, we'll just grab the short guy. See that little bit more on the handle, right, the padded part. And then it's a situation where we're also bulbous, right? It's a little bit more comfortable for the end user. This is still not comfortable by any stretch of the imagination, at least for me, but it's more comfortable than this. Also, lengthwise, this is standard versus the Roto. And then right here, uh, to give you an idea, like this is a really nice overall length, the 160 millimeters for quarter drive ratchet. That is the Tecton. Coming in next, this I brought over for a very good reason. It's like my bread and butter. This is what I grew up with for the longest time. This was my only quarter drive ratchet. What is it? Craftsman USA. <laughs> That's right. And uh, it's a situation where, check that out. Obviously, you can see some many, many advantages of the Koken Zeal versus this raised panel technology of the 90s. But the quick release buttons there, it's actually not as big as I remember it. Um, length here standard versus that just a little bit longer but note like the handle part is this is actually one of the bigger uh, quarter drive ratchets that I own uh, coming in I want to showcase Stavilla I do have their comfort grip version but it's in a little case in the truck so I'm gonna go with this guy uh, just again standard versus standard you can kind of see they're essentially almost equals this thing is stupid thin Okay, like the handle, uh, but it kind of, it goes. Obviously, this isn't a flex head, so it's kind of a different world, but just side-by-side -side comparison, so you've got something to go by. Uh, if we come in next, we'll grab the Hazette HP, this one with a quick release as well. Standard versus standard. Again, almost identical, but look at this, okay? 
the Hazette handle goes up just a little bit farther. I actually wouldn't mind it going a bit more, to be honest with you. Uh, again, in Koken's credit, I realize this is a flex head, so they are limited. But this one, you at least kind of have your thumb resting. Whereas this, I'm like essentially right here. <laughs> You know, where a selector switch would be on a Matco, which is a terrible place to be because it probably doesn't function. Uh, I'm going to come in now. We're going to go back to America. We're leaving Europe, and we're going to the good old US of A. This is an SK. This has actually been pretty good to me, and it's just a little bit longer, and that, of course, pushes the joint up, which does what? It gives us a little bit nicer of a handle. Uh, again, if we could put like a bulb-style handle on this, this would be pretty legit. Great ratchet, uh, by the way. Uh, they used to be. I'm not sure about them anymore. Uh, right here, we're going to go with this. And this is interesting. <laughs> okay, And I have used this one quite a bit. You'll probably see it in the Ram Revival. One of the reasons I was doing it, aside from just to get a feel for it, was that it was longer than my other quarter drives. So standard versus standard right here. Good old Heiko coming through. Now note, they had plenty of real estate here, especially not being a flex head to extend the handle. It's just one of those things. Maybe 95% of people are preferentially leaning this direction. I'm the odd duck, I don't care. Still what I like. I'm going to stand by it. Uh, the 160 versus the Heiko. Again, this is a really, really nice length. The 160 four-quarter drive, in my opinion. Uh, I also grabbed this. This is a standard 3 8 uh, Coke and Zeal. You can kind of see here. Uh, note the difference in the overall handle. Obviously, here we're right past the flex joint. Even with this one, it's undersized. <laughs> right? But, man... Just such a such a nice ratchet action there, uh, and the last one that I've got, or was that the last one? Uh, what I wanted to do, I guess, next is take this and kind of compare it our longer iteration. So you got the 160, and then this, just their standard part number, very very close. I want to say, if memory serves me correctly, that's a 180. Don't hold me to it, but uh, that's kind of what it's shaping up to be. So that gives you an idea. This is standard 3 8 versus extended quarter. I think this is an awesome size for quarter 90% of the time, but for tight quarters or if that's all that you do, I think the standard route is how you're going to want to go. Uh, me personally, if I had to just pick one, I'm going that direction. So uh, again, fixed because they didn't offer quick release. Uh, we've got Hazette's, maybe just with the quick release. We've got Stavilla. Uh, quick release only. SK is fixed. Heiko is quick release. Craftsman's quick release, and a little Tekton Roto, which kind of is a different ball game altogether. It's also quick release. So, <laughs> like you can kind of see, it's what I sort of prefer with quarter drive. But the SK and this little guy right here, if I've ever got weird stuff or like super ridiculous excursions where we we're having, you know, contact with the really thin head, I think we're good to go. So. That is what we got. That is what we brought in. That is the video. That's it. That's all I've got to offer you this time around. I want to know your thoughts on this, particularly how you feel about the price point on the quarter drive. Um, again, it's one of those deals. I almost prefer to see the quarter drive be, say, 40 bucks, and then 3 8 80 and half inch 120 and kind of like that tier versus quarter drive is 40, 3 8 is 45, and half inch is 50, because then I feel like I'm kind of getting ripped. There's certain mid-tier companies that have kind of followed that format, and uh, I'm not going to throw any names out. You can fill in the blanks for yourself, and I'm not saying it's like a bad product or anything. I'm just saying, like, if you've got a half inch drive ratchet that's, you know, like double the length of your quarter, significantly thicker... <laughs> That's a larger ratcheting mechanism. More material on the handle requires more machine work. I don't think that $10 window from quarter to half is justified. I'm thinking maybe you set your price point there and then you just literally ratchet back for your two smaller sizes. I don't know. But uh, with the Koken, they've kind of, like I said, these are a, they came in a lot more expensive than I thought they would be. Um, and I still think they're they're obviously below your like most expensive options. Now with the German stuff here and even the SK and everything, like I'm thrifty. I shop around, I wait, you know, I've got the craftsman, 
things got me through the majority of my life. All these are relatively new. Uh, this is all I had for forever, and it got me by. So, I mean, I can wait. I can go back to spinning this thing if we need to, and at least here at the house. And it's a situation where I'll wait. I will wait for the deal. I'll wait for a sale, tool of the day, massive coupon, once a year sale, whatever it might be. I'm willing to just wait for that to take shape, to line up, and then I'll jump onto the uh, bandwagon at that point. But I do think these are worth it. It's just I think that they are kind of getting on the top echelon of that like sweet spot. They're dangerously close, in my opinion, to spilling over. And at that point, if you've got somebody, you know, maybe the truck comes by and, you know, they've been buying for years or, you know, it's a new dealer swinging by and you can swing as transaction, whatever it might be, uh, and you're just going to spend a few more dollars, I don't know. <laughs> you know uh, it's one of those things, you know, the people would have to have brand preferences or just say, hey, you know, I've used both for a long time. This is what I think is going to work best. But you have to remember, for a lot of people, it's just the best bang for the buck. Uh, there's more people than you would think that do take resale value into account. For me, that's never really something I'm like, oh, well, it's going to be able to be sold for more later. Uh, I'm not buying something to sell it later. <laughs> you know, like I'm buying it because I want it. If we ever get to that point, you know, it might be nice. But um, I don't know. I just, I kind of wish they were just a little bit lower. Uh, and that's not just for me and my wallet. That's just I kind of looking out for coking. And like I said, though, I don't doubt that they've, you know, got it justified. It's just, I kind of saw the prices on the quarter and I was like, dang, <laughs> you know, it's not what I was expecting. So uh, to recap once again for you, uh, the 2726Z, this little guy down here, your standard quick release, uh, it's going to be 101.75. So again, think of that as a hundred bucks. And then the extended reach, 123.20. We'll call it 120. So that's all I've got for you. Um, I don't know that many of you will have had these very long. I'm sure some of you like ordered instantaneously. I don't know if Koken has shipped. I don't know if you like picked them up elsewhere or went straight through Japan or something. But if you do have these, how long have you had them? How do you like them? Uh, do you feel like they compare well with your previous Zeal Ratchets, whether that's 36 tooth or the 3H Drive 72 tooth? Um, let me know on the handle if you agree with me, if you disagree, if you think, man, that is perfect, this guy's a nut, that's all that you need, you don't want any bigger. Uh, let me know if you disagree with me and you think it should be even bigger. <laughs> you know, we ought to, we ought to come in and have a, at minimum, you know, a handle this size type of a thing. Uh, whatever your thoughts are and why they are that way, feel free to leave that in the comments section. And the end goal is to help people out. Uh, once more, you will know if you are the person that is using this on the daily and require something that small. If you do, this is a ticket. This is the golden ticket. Fantastic ratchet action. If you're using this frequently as your daily or, you know, in certain applications that you regularly perform, super well justified on the price point. For everybody else, I would say if you have to pick one to start with, given that this is only a $20 jump, this is way more comfortable to use. You might be able to get to, it's catch-22, you know, like this will get to more places, but it also can't get into as many places, if that makes any sense in terms of your swing and throw. Uh, I would go this route. Quick release doesn't really matter. It's really the quick release does not add that much money. It's kind of like two component grip. Sometimes you think like, oh, that's going to add a lot. And it's like, well, it's $2. <laughs> it's like, why wouldn't I do it? Uh, so I don't think that's a detriment. Kind of pick your poison for me. You know, it's just something I wanted to try. Uh, we'll obviously be experimenting with that. I am going to make myself use this for quite a few things, kind of get a feel for it, see if I can tolerate it or hate it, or maybe even like it or don't even find it objectionable uh, in use. These are all bench impressions, keep in mind, because these haven't spun anything real world just yet. And then this little guy, I think, is a great add-on, okay? So whether you get to a situation where you're like, oh, geez, I needed that, <laughs> You know, and you bring it in at that point, or if it's just a deal where you think, you know what, at some point in time I'm going to need it, put it on the back burner, put it on the wish list, grab what you will use or what you think you're going to utilize the most first, and then just have this on the pipe dream category, right? Birthday rolls around, Christmas, you know, who knows, you get a bonus at work, your scratch-off lottery ticket instead of winning $2 gets, you know, 250 this time. 
boom, there you go. Your little guy uh, has come home. So, uh, like I said, this will have its place and its purpose, and that's why it's here. It's just for me personally, I think this one will probably be sufficient for tight spots even probably 85 percent of the time that said and you know i do have them both we will go back and forth but it's just it's kind of cumbersome i'm not gonna lie like if you have big hands it just it gets painful uh to use this you know it's you're gonna want to minimize your use with its situations right uh same thing over here this guy I used a lot until i got the extended one <laughs> now i use that way more uh, so it's just kind of personal preference, but again, you can kind of see where my thumb is wanting to rest, and that's just always how I've gauged things. But uh, I do realize there's times, you know, if you can get your hand in, you can just spin back here. A lot of the times I just choke up on the ratchet and I'm up here. So, you know, consequences be dang, but for me, it's just, it's almost like a comfort thing, and it's like I'm having to close my hands too much, and I don't know. But, uh, like I said, I do... I was surprised by the price point. I would like to have seen it just a little bit lower for quarter drive, but because, uh, like I said, you know, the half inch stuff is not that much more, and it's not quite as egregious as like the companies that literally just 30, 35, 40, or 40, 45, 50 stair step it like that. I think Koken would actually have like valid reasoning production cost wise for this, but it is kind of a deal where like when I see the half and the three eighths. And the three eighths is like right here. I just like, eh, you know. <laughs> so uh, if it makes more sense, you know, if you've got a chance to get like a four cylinder, a six cylinder uh, V8 or a supercharged V8, and the supercharged V8 and the V8 are like five dollars apart, and then the six cylinder is five dollars cheaper, and then the uh, four cylinder is five dollars cheaper than that, you're like, huh. <laughs> Yeah. Seems like there's a lot more that went into that blown V8. You know, it's got a forged crank, and I mean, the blower itself is worth way more than five dollars. You just kind of—it's like, yeah, you know. I think I'm gonna—I'm gonna spend twenty dollars extra and get the uh, top of the line type of a deal, right? It's kind of drinks. Small, medium, large. You know, if like the small is a buck seventy-five, the medium is two fifty, and the large is four fifty. You know, you're probably gonna come in and get the medium, right? Uh, but if it's a situation where the small is a buck seventy, the medium is a buck seventy-five, and the large is a dollar eighty-five, you're like, huh? I'd kind of be an idiot <laughs> to not just get the large, especially when the small is tiny, and if you touch it too hard, you're gonna poke through the foam and spill it all anyway. But uh, yeah, just my thoughts. <laughs> and, uh, like I said, the main thing: this is a tool haul. This is first impressions, bench impressions. Ultimately, we will use these. We'll see what we think of them. It's just I've never had a situation where I've ever been, even with the Capri thing that I've wound up loving, I still don't love the fact that the handle is way too short. Okay, that still annoys me. It still bothers me, just like the day that we brought it in in a tool haul. So I think that's how this is going to pan out, honestly. But I do think this is going to come in handy, and for really, really rare situations for myself personally, uh, this thing could be a lifesaver, and that's why it's here. So... I wish there was like a coking tool of the day, you know, uh, whether it's direct through them or through a distributor or something where like you get this for like 40% off and then that's when I jump on it and I justify it, you know, and I'm like, oh, that's too good of a deal to pass up, might need that someday. But for all intents and purposes, I would go this route unless again, you're Mr. Tight Quarters and you know like, hey, this is too big, this is the ticket. So I'm also curious, quick release or no quick release, what is your preference on quarter drive and why do you follow suit up the ladder, three-eighths, half, three-quarter? I'm not sure that there's as many three-quarter quick release, but beside that, just in theory, uh, do you do quick release in quarter and not three-eighths or do it in the two small sizes and then eliminate it in half? Do you do it all the way across? Would you never touch anything with quick release? Let me know. Uh, always interesting to discuss things like that. But on that front, I'm going to quit rambling. Probably need to go in and make my supper. I also just really want to turn this fan back on. I've <laughs> been slaving away back here for you people, you know. But uh, yeah, those are my thoughts kind of in a nutshell. And again, I know it probably seems like it's more of a downtrodden video. It's really not because the ratchet action is, like I said, that's why these are here. Uh, if the ratchet action was just meh, you know, uh, these would not be here. These are phenomenal ratchets. I love them. That's why we continue to buy them. That's why we waited for the 72 tooth iteration. But 
this little guy right here, um, that's what sold me on waiting out for these because of how well it performs. So, uh, and that's all about the ratchet mechanism. The magic happens in here, you know, and who knows, maybe there's more machining required to actually make the smaller, I don't know what they're doing. You know, they've got like castings or they're machining it, you know, from like raw stock and <laughs> CNC machines. Uh, it could be a situation where they come in and it's like the same blanks and then just literally, you know, like it's then cheaper to machine it for the half inch and then three eighths is more and quarter drive costs a ton and it's a pain to assemble. I don't know the back end. I just know like from a consumer perspective, very few people will ever think of things in that line. And it's going to be like, well, that's smaller. It should cost less. It's just like ingrained in our minds, just small, medium and large deal. So yeah. Um, Phenomenal ratchets. I wish this was a little bit bigger on the handle. Obviously with coking across the board, I wish there was a little bit more meat here, you know, get down with the thickness. <laughs> but uh, Anyway, they're very sculpted and chiseled. Some people will like that. Uh, but uh, it is what it is. I'm excited to have them, excited to use them. Obviously we'll come back on these uh, possibly as early as like two or three hauls down the line and we'll have had significant usage with these because I will force myself, even though I would typically use 3 8 since these are here, I'll make myself use them, and I'll be like, good lord, I can't stand it, bring this back in my life, or I'll be like, well, you know, it's not that bad after all. <laughs> so, I just, I know myself pretty well, better than most people know me, know myself, so uh, I think my complaints will stand. I'm just that type of a guy, but uh, yeah, LoneStarMopars.com is the website. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, all three at Lone Star Mopars. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like, leave a comment. If you haven't subscribed, I encourage you to do so. If you jump your charger across the creek, ring the bell, and fit this tiny little ratchet in to uh, tighten down the middle part of the bell. I'm not sure what that would be called. <laughs> uh, I'm sure there's a name, probably knew it. We'll just roll with the middle part of the bell. Uh, tighten that down with your tiny little coke, and YouTube just might notify you. We got new videos every Saturday, 9 a.m. Texas time. We also do Wednesday, same time. And uh, on that front, thanks for watching. Hope you have yourself a fantastic weekend. Most importantly, I hope I catch you back here for a follow-up on these guys and more action from the shop.